or when? I think we're live. I think we're live. It ain't Memorex no more. I hope y'all can hear me. If you can, give us a thumbs up or let us know because we're trying to adjust the volume and the lighting. So we just need a little help to make sure it's right. We in the kitchen today because we ain't got no signal where the wagon is. So bear with us. We'll get it all to going and we're going to have a good time and we're going to cook what? Who knows what we're cooking, Shan? Does anybody know? Because I forgot the recipe. Whoa, salmon patties. Yeah. With okay, the... and Matt says it looks good, sounds good. Looks good, sounds good. We got good. Terrence from New York. Hello, Terrence. I hope you're well, my friend. So everybody, we're going to let everybody just sort of visit around here a minute till we can get good and started and know that we got everybody and then we'll jump to the recipe. Uh, I hope y'all caught the video yesterday. Uh, we had a good time putting that in together and we didn't even actually have to cook nothing. That was a sort of a good deal for me. But uh, we hope y'all watched it. It was uh, something that we wanted to put out to where everybody can just have a good time, see some of the things that, you know, maybe we've done through the years and had a lot of people comment. I remember that. I remember old Frank the Wonder Dog. So it was... Uh, Hang on. You're waiting a little bit. I can't look good more. On there. Pearl looks good. Pearl the granddaughter is over here manning the computer. I give her a shout out, Shan, over there. Can you do that? Yes, we are trying to get things in good stuff. We are, and we still two minutes, but it is officially time to get going. Uh, doing well. I hope you were able to find the groceries that we needed Raptor for this. Raptor M says the volume sounds low. Can they Volumes? turn it up on their computer? Yes, they can. Oh, video is breaking up. Uh oh. Audio is breaking up. Okay, here. Let's Hang go. on. See if our audio is better now. I'm just going to go. Any, any better now without that, folks? We're just trying to check. So let us know which one is best. I don't know why the audio might be. Let me move this right here in the front. See if it well, I already cut us out. So I'm just going to go. Is is the audio better now? Okay, everybody says. So we're just going to go with the camera audio. So we don't need this buzz button? No, but you could leave it on if you want. Oh, I like a corsage. I do. I uh, hope everybody's had a great day today because it is a great day above the grass and every time you get to have one and uh, there was a lot of vitamin D in our country today raining down from the sunshine, 95 degrees in southwest Oklahoma. Uh, summer was a little early, but I think it's supposed to be down in the 50s again by the weekend. So it's spring in Oklahoma, you never know what you're going to get, but hey, we take it all and we love it each and every day. But uh, this has been a recipe that's probably been in our family for ever since I was little. So. That's been at least two weeks ago. And uh, we've always had it. It was one of them deals that was easy to fix. You could put it together in a hurry. And uh, hey, we had a guy from Alaska today said, I hope you don't mind. I'm probably going to use fresh salmon. And uh, mm, I'd like to have me some of that too. Okay, I'm getting a lot of conflicting audio. Um, people are saying it's great, and then people are saying it's too low. So I don't know if that was from the old mic. Well, you want to put your mic back in there and see just to make sure because we haven't had no trouble with these before. And, uh, everybody's phone is well, on airplane. So I think we're good, is that right? Let me try one more time with our mic. Have any of you on airplane? No. <laughs> so we're gonna try it one more okay, time. Okay, one more time. Because we'll... we still got 59 seconds before we officially have to start, Shep. So, and it says we are connected here, so. Uh, let us know, folks, if that's any better, and uh, we'll try to keep it at one level or the other, and we'll get started and make sure it's good. Uh, Chris says that's much better. Much Shannon better. Says, said loud and clear. Loud and clear. I think the other people are coming in later because they're saying I'm too loud, which is when the mic was yeah. off. So we'll go with that, folks, and uh, hope that we've used these road mics before, and they've always been good to us. And uh, everything looked good over there now, check, Pearl? Check audio on your computer just a little bit, yeah. just so it's low. Just, Everything yeah. is good, good, I think. We are good okay, to go. We're gonna roll so down. it is officially go. 6 o'clock in southwest Oklahoma. Welcome. Hey, folks, we're so glad to have you. New subscribers, hey, we're glad to have you all. And we've picked up a bunch of them in the last 28 days. Guess what happened this morning at 7.49 Central Time? Anybody remember? I do. Me and Shan, we had a celebratory cup of coffee with the Beagle and Duke. We reached 1 million subscribers. And that's due to y'all, folks. We couldn't have done it without you. We have the best fans in the world, and uh, we're just so glad to have you, and we call you all family. And since we've all gathered here, what do you do? You cook for family. 
So I hope everybody got the ingredient list that Shan had on there, or maybe so you have the cookbook. If you do have the cookbook, it's on page 224. It is this one right here, the new one that just came out last week, Faith, Family, and the Feast. But it's there for you in the community tab or on our Facebook page. You can have the recipe, and I'm going to give you a little time, but we're going to talk about what we need to put all this together. You can see down there that, first of all, it says at the bottom of the recipe, dill sauce. Now, me, I really didn't like dill till Shan come along, so I have to like it now. You know what I mean? But it is very good with a salmon patty. So, so what do we need for the sauce? For the sauce, we're going to need some sour cream. Oh, we got, we got a request of where uh -oh. are the dogs. <laughs> the big is in there asleep, and there ain't no telling where Duke's at. The dogs. Is Duke in there too? Yeah, y'all know Duke. He's a pretty famous dog. He has his own mayonnaise company, Duke's Mayonnaise. Now, folks in the South got me on this quite a while back and told me, Kent, you need to be using that Duke's. And let me tell you, folks, if you can find it, that probably is the best mayonnaise I have ever used in my life on a sandwich cooking. Mix that in with some eggs of a morning, make some light and creamy. Mm, it is so good. So, sour cream, mayonnaise, a little bit of dill weed. And if you got some fresh growing right there, use that too. Some granulated garlic, and we're in good shape. So we're going to put this together, we are. So we're going to start with a half a cup of mayonnaise and sour cream. Ooh, I don't even want to stay up there. So we're just going to put it over here. Y'all know That's my right measuring. measuring. Well, I'm trying to be precise tonight. We're going to call that a half a cup on the money. Mayonnaise and sour cream always work well together. So let me get this in here cleaned off a little. And we'll get us a half a cup of Duke's mayonnaise. And I hope y'all are following right along. I don't want none of you to get ahead of us. I think we had some comments earlier that people said, I've already made this, so we're going to eat them and just watch the video. I reckon that's all right, too. So a half cup of mayonnaise. Then we're going to use some of this here dill weed. And oh, it never has been opened, Shen. It's fresh. Yeah, that's because we don't use it much. You know what I mean? So bear with me, folks. These things can be perplexing. I want to know how many people are actually making this along or how many are just watching. I would like to know that too. I'd like to everybody to be making if I'm making. So we got dill weed. We got us some garlic powder. And I'm just going to sift a little in there. I like about that much. The precise recipe is laying there before us all. So yeah, there's a few people actually making it. That is good. Mix all this together, folks, because we need it to set in what I call it, the ice box. And we're going to let it set till we get the rest of these patties all made up and get them fried. And the big said, if, if we're going to eat, I'm going to come in the kitchen. You have woke up, are you? So let me get this in there. Ice box. And we'll get back over here. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. Now, I hope you were all able to find a can of salmon. Now, folks, I have made many a meal out of that stuff right out of the can. I can just open it right up and just commence to eat. It is pretty good stuff. Now, my mother actually replaced this at times with just a can of tuna. But folks, I'll tell you something else that goes in it just as well, and that is sardines. Now, I don't be buying them old nine cent a can sardines. I buy them kipper snacks, and they'll work just the same. Just make sure that you get them in there and get them all mixed up really well. So let's get what, over. What special equipment do we need first? Cast iron. It is the best thing to fry something in, a heat source. Bertha's not in the house, so we're gonna use this new newfangled stove we have here and we're going to need some frying oil now i'm going to use avocado oil i've been to where i'm getting quite fond of it but you can use peanut oil anything with pretty high smoke point now we're going to try to run about 350 so it's not real critical that we have to have something that's going to get to 400 or so and it's just going to be a shallow fry folks so we're just going to go ahead and pour this in there so that oil can be warming up and bear with me as this goes in there it's got one of them fancy pouring spouts on it. it takes about a quarter of an inch probably as you get up height wise on the skillet just make sure you have enough 
If they don't have cast iron, what's best? If you don't have cast iron, hey, I really don't like stainless steel because sometimes that stuff transfers heat too fast for me. So if you're going to use it, make sure that you have maybe a thermometer to check that heat and make sure you stay a little below 350 in that stainless steel. But one thing about cast iron, folks, too, is this stuff is saving you money because when we get this hot, we can actually turn it down to where it doesn't take as much heat because cast iron is holding heat in. So let me find a can opener. And look how organized my drawers are. Well, it may be organized, but there ain't no can opener in there. I'm just... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, folks. We may have uh -oh, to... Uh-oh, we're having a chop situation. We may... They took the can openers from me one time and chopped. They really did. I don't see nary can opener nowhere, Shan. Uh-oh. Folks, guess what's going to happen? Y'all have seen it happen many times. So we're going to... you don't like. We're try to find the correct... It ain't in here neither. <laughs> so let's look over here. I just, I just emptied that. Huh. <laughs> Maybe she put it in here. Folks, this is what you call having bloopers and you didn't even know it. So, can opener. Now, a lot of people tell me you can't be doing that. It's hard on knives. I don't really like this knife anyway, as y'all can see up here. This knife is already bent. Oh, yeah. It has opened many cans before. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this heat down to about medium right there. And we're going to take this. Said, use your teeth. <laughs> I c we're just going to open this can. Now, a lot of you be thinking, mm, that is the bad way to do it. But how many of you seen our chopped grill masters? No, not chopped. It was chopped redemption in New York City. They took all the can openers away from us before we ever started. Some of them folks didn't know how to open a can with a knife. I was shocked. I can tell y'all I didn't like this knife because I don't know if I'm going to get it open. You know this is real. <laughs> so there we go, folks. Now, I want Shan to get in here. See that juice that's in there? Don't think we're going to strain this. No. I want you to dump the entire content in there. And when you have a can opener, it comes out better. So just make sure you get it all in there. Hand whittling 101, David. Yes, it is good. When you get it in there, take you a spoon or a fork, and I just want you to just mash it up in here. And sometimes you will see when they can this salmon, they might be a bone in there that's big enough you can't eat it. But this stuff has been pressure cooked, so them bones as soft as they can be. I ain't never worried about none of them. I just like to get it mashed up pretty good. But we still got folks cooking along. That's what I want to know. Um, I think if they are cooking, they're probably not going to be typing, too, so we can't ask them. They probably had real can openers in Rick their kitchen. Rick wants to know how many people are actually cooking along. That's and right. I'd like know to know. because they're cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, y'all know what we call these? Remember? How many of you know? I need for you to holler it out. Cackle berries and rooster bullets. It takes two of them. We're not going to just beat them or anything before we put them in and the shell don't go, we're just going to break them in there and let them sit. Now, I'm going to mix that just a tad, get them eggs all mixed up in there well. And if chicken you... butt nuggets. Who? Somebody said chicken butt nuggets. Chicken butt nuggets. I'll be. That's a pretty good term for them. Now, if you can get fresh eggs, mm, folks, it even makes this a better dish. And the big says I might have spilled some, but he's going to get licked off the floor, he is. So when you mix that up right there, and you can see the consistency of that. Big says, no, I can't, but it is just right. Two eggs, and be sure that we drain the can, make sure we get all the juice in there. Now to that, we're going to get us three-fourths cup of flour. Now, folks, I like to put this in as I need it. Sometimes you may not use exactly three-fourths of a cup, and I'll show you when we get there. But bacon powder. It's got to have a little because I like to give them just a little pop on that crust. So let's get us some of that in there. Anybody know what the measurement says in the book, Shin? Uh, I don't. Uh, I so I'm, I'm going to put that much right there in there, which I think is the correct amount. Give it one more stir. 
And you can season with salt or pepper at this time, but why would you when you could season with our original? It's got a little lemon to it, folks, so it really goes great with this dish. It We've does. Got some folks just jumping on now. There we go. Well, thank y'all for just joining in. You're a little bit behind, but I got faith in you catching up. We appreciate each and every one Why of you are watching. You doing this recipe? Why am I doing it? Because it is something that is simple, and if you can find this in the grocery store, it has graced our table many times, and it's so easy to put together, and it's really pretty quick. The little sauce is in there chilling. It is going good as it can be. So, hey, we are good. Now, folks, we got to have some green onion. And I had a knife one time. Not that knife I was using, huh? I didn't really like it. So, you can put these on a cutting board. No, put it on a cutting board. I got a cutting board. Oh, my board. gosh, you're going to use that? Uh-huh. That's precision. That is what you call being here at the right time in the right place. And that is what you call getting the most use out of your mesquite spatula. Big don't eat that onion. So, in they go. And folks, if I have doctored these up in so many ways to where I would go ahead and put a jalapeno in there with them that was diced up. So whatever you need that suits your flavor taste, hey, that's what I'm after. Taste. And that right there, folks, gives it a little color. Now it's time to add the flour. And like I said, we're not just going to dump three-fourths of a cup in there. We are going to just sort of go with it as it needs it. So we'll start with about a half. Because we want these to be able to sort of hold together, but you don't want them so dry that they're crumbly and fall apart. And I'll let you see it here in a minute how it falls off the spoon and you'll know what we're after. We're made just a tad. So we're going to end up probably using nearly that three-fourths of a cup. And I can smell that oil is getting nearly right to the right temperature. And how many of you know we've probably done left out some ingredients somewhere, Shen? Hmm? I think in that dill sauce, it was supposed to have a little lemon. Yes. Uh huh. Somebody, I think, did ask. Yes. We'll do that later. And the lemon is here. Don't think we ain't got one. Whew. Somebody remind us when we pull out the sauce. Yeah. So, folks, I like to just take a little Wait, of this. Wait, show me the consistency that we're looking for. You can see how it falls off there really as a whole piece now. So, it is what I'd call just right. Now, I like to test that grease. So we're just going to take a little dab of that. And you can see it's frying right along. And folks, we on medium heat. So we ain't got this thing up on high. It was on high maybe two minutes, and then we just turned it down. Now, a lot of you, people are asking about breadcrumbs. I have used breadcrumbs in them. I have used panko in them. Uh, Whatever you got on hand, hey, I've seen people do it with rice flour, almond flour. This is more the late depression era. This is that. how my mother always made them, and we used a spoon that big. So we're just going to take that. You can see that, dollop it right over. And when you get to that point right there, I just want you to give them a little mash right there. While that one's sitting in there, we'll go ahead and get him a buddy. This is more of a shallow fry now than a deep fry. Remember that as we're going along here. And look at that little fella. He says, turn me over. That is the Beagle's first sample. And look at that good golden color we got there, folks. And you can make them smaller. You'll get more servings out of them. But this is going to suit us just fine. So, About what temp do you think your oil is running? We're running about 350 because uh, we're on about 4 or 5 on that. And it goes to 10, so we're medium. Try to run it 350. Uh, you get any hotter than that, you'll brown that crust too fast and it'll be a little less cooked in the middle. So we got four in there. Can we get one more? What are you making? Salmon patties. As we call them in our country. I was say, you never said salmon. I did that for you. We call them salmon patties because look here on the can. S-A-L-M-O-N, salmon. No. How do you say it, Shan? Salmon. Salmon. Uh -huh, that's what I thought. Now. I need you to get you a paper towel, put in a plate, or if you got a wire rack that's sitting over a cookie sheet, 
because we're going to need to turn them over here in just a second. Who was first in? Does anybody remember? Uh, I think it was this guy right here, okay. but he's not ready. You can see he's browning just a little around the edges. We ain't going to turn him too quick, but this little fella that's sitting right here, he needs to come out. And I want you all to look at that. Mm. The big says, I could look at that real good if you get it closer. We're talking goodness. So usually about maybe three to four minutes aside when you're at the right temperature of the oil and then you'll flip them back over. Get them to where they're good and crispy because that's the best part of it. They have graced our table so many times and they are so easy. But while I got y'all's attention and them are frying, guess what? Saturday, 9 a.m. Central Time, there's another video coming out. We're trying to get y'all a lot of content. A lot of you be quarantined up just like we are. We want to have you something to watch. So be sure you tune in for that. Hope everybody's seen the video yesterday that we put out. And uh, we just need you to share the good news and share the happiness. So I think it's time we can maybe take a peek under here. Maybe use your other, use your other one over there. Oh, you got another one over yeah. there? You're so gifted. So we're going to turn him over. And folks, I like to do it this way so he don't splatter no grease. Ooh, that's and that's great. what I'd call just right. It's like you've done this before. I have cooked these many times. It used to always be a staple on ranches for me as a noon meal because I tried to cook for them guys just like my mother used to cook for me. And uh, they are good eating. Have you ever put these on a bun? I have put them on a piece of light bread and then slathered them with ketchup and called them a sandwich many times. And folks, I even like these cold. I'll cook a bunch of them, we'll eat them, and then I'll wrap the rest of them up or just let them sit there on the stove a while and sit. And mm, I can come by and get me one of them and a loaf of bread. I'm in good shape, I am. Anybody got any questions, Sham, we need to know of that we can answer while we got a little time here? Because we're just frying right along. We were going pretty quick there for a minute. So, I want you to... Uh, do you eat them with ketchup? Do I eat them with ketchup? I do. But the dill sauce is ooh, so good if you like that stuff. But I'll tell you something that's really good on them too, and that's our relish. And I have done some of all of that. Can you describe the scent since we haven't figured out smell vision yet? The scent. The aroma is calming. It is soothing. It's calming? Yes. To me it is. When you can hear that sizzle in the skillet, that's what I'm talking about. It's music to my ears. So, hey, we in good can shape. Can you use other fish? I have used, uh, when we were little and young, some of them folks would go fishing for carp or gar, and then they would, it's a real bony fish, but then they would pressure cook that down to where it's just softened all them bones, make carp patties, gar patties. It's sort of the same thing, but it works just as well. Uh, it's something that we had a lot of back in the times because we could get them out of the river and hey, my mama could fix them. So you can use a lot of things, tuna fish, sardines, just make sure you get the egg in there, make sure you get the flour, and you're in good shape. Billy Blair wants to know what happy dance you're going to be doing today. Happy dance, Billy Blair? I don't really know. It's got to be the one million subscription happy dance, and I'm probably going to get some of my people to help me that's sitting over here on this other side because they love to dance. I just know they do. Let's take a peek over here and just see this side. We like just a little, folks, so we're going to let so them go. So you're just looking for like an even golden brown on a little yeah. crust? Yeah. Can, can you hear that? That's the crust I'm after. Now, I have deep fried these, and you can just, when you take them, get that spoon. When you, I'll just show you. You get that spoon up there, set the whole spoon in the oil, and then just let it slide off. That way, you ain't getting a bunch of little droplets everywhere and have like 37,000 little salmon patties floating around. Ooh, Nick said your Big Mac sauce would be really good with these. Ooh, it would for a fact, folks. And I want to thank y'all so much for the Big Mac video that uh, y'all uh, embraced it and it took off. I think it's a uh, million five, million six now. So that is good. Uh, we're just trying to share good food, happy times, and something to eat. So we're going to take this one that was the first participant in the, the swimming pool. That's a pool. big old boy. Uh-huh. I need to get him moved over so that you can sit there. And folks, if you don't like them that thick, give them a little more mashing. But you can see that bacon powder sort of makes things jump up there a little. And that's what I'm after because remember, this salmon is cooked and it don't take long for that egg to cook in this mixture. 
Ain't no sense in overcooking them. Sort of like a steak. Y'all remember that deal. He done died once. We ain't gonna kill him twice. If anybody is actually frying these, let us know how it's going. Yeah, I need to know. That is a good sound. I like that crust, so I'm gonna give these just a little more on this other side. Ooh, there we go. You can see the difference in the color if we're turning these over, so we're gonna let them brown just a little more. Do they, somebody, Johnny wants to know, do they hold the oil a lot? Not that much. They will get some of that oil, but you can see we started out with that avocado oil about a quarter of inch thick. We still got a lot of oil in there, so you're not really soaking it up. That's why you want to have your oil at 350 and not any cooler, because if you don't, that oil will soak up in there further. So Bill says his are gray. Chris said his need a little more browning. There you go. I I'm coming I'm over. I'm these people that are cooking and typing. Hey, that is good. Maybe they have a sweet though. It is called a cook along, and they're actually participating. Look here, big. The bowl is empty, buddy. It is bad, it is. So let me give this one here a little mash that was last. Let's check these that we turned. Those are pretty. Uh-huh. And they hot enough to burn the hair off a of frog's butt, too. I'll promise you that. But you can see that onion in there. Give it a little color. And, ooh, it does add some taste to it. So... Keep an eye on your heat. Make sure that you're not running too hot. You may have to turn it up, turn it down just a little, but make sure you try to stay at 350. And it's like I say, it's this, a shallow fry. And this was supposed to make about 10 patties, but yeah. yours are a little bigger than suggested. Remember so. when we made the Big Mac? Uh -huh. <laughs> Y'all know that we're going to cook them. We're going to cook them where they're big enough to hold something. Where's Duke? The Duke is asleep, if I was guessing. Duker, people are asking about you. Get up. But he can't eat these anyway. Uh-uh. We'll have to give him a little jerky or something. Yeah, they're going to have to have something or they, don't, they won't want to participate no more. So, folks, y'all seen how easy this was to put together? And, hey, we don't got a full meal deal. It's a happy meal don't come in a sack. A lot of people have been asking about, like, because the stores are low about recipe ideas and we did create a, a playlist. Yes, we have some simple, easy cooking playlist that you can go, what do you call the name of it? I think it's it? called Simple Recipes, Easy Ingredients or yes. something like that. And uh, playlist. They're, all, they're all easy. Uh, everything we cook is easy. Uh, and I, if you can't find some of this Stokes stuff, folks, uh, be creative because a lot of stuff will take its place. If you can't find salmon, hey, get you some tuna. If you can't find tuna, get you some sardines. They'll work. But hey, don't be afraid to try something. This is the time when you might create a masterpiece. So we like just a little on that last one. Let me get that sauce out, Shin, and okay. we'll add a little lemon to it. If you're just jumping on, we made a sauce of the DNA. Yeah, a dill sauce. Got half a cup of sour cream, half a cup of mayo, a little bit of dill weed, a little bit of garlic, and we're gonna have some onion. No, we're gonna have some lemon. What's your lemon trick there? Roll that lemon first before you ever cut it. Makes it easier to squeeze that juice, and look at that seed wanting to jump out of there. So we'll put him right over here, and just give it a good squeezing, and we'll mix it one more time. But folks, I like them this way too. Oh. I like to give them a little of that so they'll have some of that to sit right there on top while we get this last one out of there. Barnes & Noble does have our cookbook and we have signed copies on our website. Now folks, remember you can season this with salt and pepper, whatever you need, but if you got some of that original, like I say, it's got sort of a lemon base to it when we start with it, so it's gonna make it to where it gives it a little tang. Let me find this here little baby spatula whisk that I had in there before. And we'll stir that up with that lemon. And that even smells good. Here, Shall I'll I? get close so we can smell it. Yeah, Ooh. smells like dill. I wanna see what your plating looks like. Oh, let's see. I gotta find one first. Excuse me, big. Well, I think today we'll go with this corralware, okay? <laughs> corralware? It's, uh, it's, it's been corralled up there in the, in the pantry for quite some time. So, you can do this one of seven ways. Me, 
If I had a spoon, it'd be even better. And a fork. So we're just gonna get us some of this sauce. Somebody wants to know, is this recipe in the cookbook? It is on page 224, I think is the exact number. Oh, it's on one? Faith, Family, and the Feast. In fact, I'll just put it right here to where they can see it. And I'm gonna take some of this sauce. And let me see if I can do this the way they used to do it on some you of them food You gotta do network. the thing and then the Yeah. There you go. Now you gotta put your spoon in the middle and then scrape it. That's how they do it. That's the way I like it. And then you take this one that come out very first. You remember which one he is because you laid him at three o'clock on the plate. Always put the first one at three. Oh. And then you take this and you break it across there and brings back many a Sunday night supper at our house. Then you don't need a fork no more, folks. Easy. You can't have this. It's got, let me see if I can find you a bite. I don't have an onion. There you go. And oh my gosh. Oh, everybody shows up. There's no onion right here, Dookie. Hang on. There you go. Y'all had y'all's now. That's what it. What side do you like to serve these with? If I'm going to fix it and we're going to have it, we're most of the time going to have it with fried potatoes or beans, maybe some fried pork chops, something like that. But folks, I can have this and up some ketchup, some of this sauce, and a piece of light bread. I'm in good shape. Mm. One thing I do get chastised for, Shen never gets a bite. Oh. oh. So have at it, Shen. Oh, I've got dill sauce. Oh, it's nice and crunchy. Uh-huh, it is good. So I'm going to have one more bite. We don't have any music to dance with, do we, Hadley? Huh? See, these good people we got over here helping us show them, Shen. <laughs> My granddaughter <laughs> and her best friend and they man in the comment section, so... What we're gonna to see tonight? Hey, I think we see a little moonwalk. Let me do a little. Bit. Get down with the salmon jam. And you got to do the low as you can go, <laughs> and you be looking good, folks. It's easy. It's quick. How did everybody's turn out if you're making them? Ah, uh, wait, wait for it. Got a wait, there. wait for it. Atta boy. You wait. No, you know to wait. You got a lot of manners. No, you get away. Okay, that's it. Did everybody's turn out good, Shen? Are, how are, are you seeing it? I hope folks had a good time. Hope they enjoyed this recipe. I need to ask you a question now. If you like these, let us know. We'll do some more of them. We'll dig a recipe out of that book or maybe our old Tasty Cowboy the book. And we'll do some more cook-alongs, we will. But remember, Wednesday, always got a video. Saturday, we're going to try to have a video nearly every Saturday. And we do this one as well, 9 o'clock a.m. Central Time. Are you going to give anybody like a hint on what it is? Yeah. Oh, they said more cook-alongs. Yes, they like the cook. Okay, so we... Oh, they do. We do this. Yeah, oh, so I'm surprised. I, I am glad they like it. It gives me something to eat for supper. Them two over there ain't getting none of it, but <laughs> we're going to have it. And then uh, the video Saturday, folks, I'm going to give you a little deal at the very end of it. You know, a lot of the time people be telling us they closed the gym down. I ain't got a gym membership no more. I can't go to the gym. How am I going to work out? We have a cowboy workout video on the end of this one that's coming I don't up know Saturday. If that's true. You don't think we it's true? So Uh-oh. Might be false advertising. <laughs> but I do know this. We're going to give you some cures that we have come up with that have always helped us at the wagon to get through some hard times. Whether you have a runny nose or maybe you even have a tooth that needs capping or you got heartburn. We just got old natural remedies that come from Mother Nature and some of them old farmer almanac deals that my mother and them used to use on us. And hey, I'm still alive. So John, gotta we be don't have to use a tripod because we have to be able to move around to show the picture. So we don't want just a stand and boring shot. Nah, ain't going to be a stand and stir. So hope everybody enjoyed this because we sure did. And uh, hey, thank y'all so much for tuning in. We'll all get through this together. It is a great time and we will come out better people on the other side. Remember... 
Always be a better neighbor because that's what Mr. Rogers told us to. And I will update the description below to include the full recipe for and directions for everybody that's going to be doing this later. Yeah, and uh, like I say, be sure you let us know you want to do this again and we'll try to do some more live cook-alongs. We'll pull a recipe from somewhere and uh, it'll be simple, it'll be easy. Check out our playlist, that's Simple Easy Recipes. Hey, they are good to go. And uh, I just tell you, God bless you, each and every one. Thank you so much for coming by the kitchen tonight. Hope you enjoyed. Everybody's got a salmon patty, so let's get after it and eat. See y'all down the trail. And the Beacon Duke say bye.